Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt and in this video I'm going to be going over how to use conversion factors to solve problems. Part whatever. Okay, let's get into this. So, first problem, we're asked what volume of blood in liters is pumped through the brain or th through your brain in 108 minutes of work that causes your heart to pump 22.3 liters per minute uh, with 3.09% uh, of which goes to the brain. So whenever you're attacking these sorts of problems, the first thing you want to do is pull out the information, pull out the conversion factors, and the conversion factors are going to be the information that's related to each other. The pieces of information has a relationship of something per something, or they connect two things together. You can use that as a conversion factor. So that's the first thing. So, uh, we're given that uh, liters of blood pump through your brain in 108 minutes of work. Uh, that causes your heart to pump 22.3 liters per minute. So, this 22.3 liters per minute, that is going to be a conversion factor. It's a relationship. It's liters of blood that's pumped through the heart for every minute. Okay, and then the other thing is we're given this percent. So the thing about a percent is that also could be used as a as a conversion factor. So percent means out of a hundred. So here it's telling you that of all the blood that's pumped through your heart, three point zero nine percent of that is going to your brain. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that. Again, percent means out of 100. So out of 100 liters of blood that's pumped through your heart, 3.09 liters is going to your brain. So there's a relationship between blood to the heart and blood to the brain. So we could use that as a conversion factor. So that looks like all of the information that has relationships. So now, we, now that we've got our conversion factors. We're going to figure out where to begin and where to end in the problem. That's the second thing you need to do. And then for that, you're going to have to go to the question. So the question has the beginning and the end at 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, and the beginning of the question is the end of your problem. So what is the beginning? What volume of blood in liters pumped to your brain? So we need blood in liters pumped to your brain, okay? That's where we need to go. Well, where do we start? Keep reading the question. It, the starting is usually in there. So if we keep reading, it says in 100 minutes. So this 100 minutes of time is where we're going to begin. Notice that the 100 minutes isn't tied to anything. It's a standalone information. So dead giveaway that that's where we're going to start. So we start with 100, 100, mil, uh, 100 minutes, 108 minutes. So we're going to put 108 minutes over 1. And we need to convert 108 minutes to blood, liters of blood through the brain. So we got minutes. Um, here we have relationship between liters and minutes, liters of blood through the heart per minute. So we can use that to convert minutes to liters of blood through the heart. So we're going to put minutes on the bottom. So one minute on the bottom. And then we have 22.3 liters. That's 22.3 liters. And that's blood to the heart. So we gotta we gotta put an indicator in there that we're talking about blood to the heart. So I'm gonna say BH. So liters of blood to the heart. So minutes cancel out. Now that we have liters of blood to the heart, we can convert to liters of blood to the brain using the percent. So we know that. 3.09% of the blood that goes to your heart goes to the brain. So out of 100 liters of blood to the heart, 
liters goes to the brain. So we can use that relationship. So I'm going to put 100 liters of blood to the heart and 3.09 liters of blood to the brain. I'll put BB for blood to the brain. So liters of blood to the heart cancels out. Now I have liters of blood to the brain. That's what they're asking for, volume of blood in liters pumped to your brain. We're done with the problem. So now all we need to do is multiply and divide. So when I do that, I get 74.4 liters of blood to the brain. And when you're figuring out your significant figures, remember that the answer, when you're multiplying and dividing, the rule is, is that your answer should have the same number of sig figs as the measurement with the least number of sig figs. Here we have three sig figs. Here we have three sig figs. And here we have three sig figs. So three is the answer. So we have three sig figs here. So that's the, that's the answer we get for this problem. Okay, let's go to the next one. So sound travels at 333 meters per second. How long does it take sound to travel the length of a 100 yard football field. So first thing you want to do is pull out your conversion factors. So the first one is this 333 meters per second. Notice it's meters per second. So it's something per something, it's a relationship. So that's going to be a conversion factor. And that's really the only one that we have here. Now we have to figure out where to begin and where to end. And the beginning of the question is the end of the problem. So we've got to go to the question for this. So we're asking, how long does it take sound? So how long does it take? We're looking for time. So we want to know the time it takes for sound to travel, right? So in this case, we're going to look for seconds. Now, where do we begin? So our ending is seconds. Where do we begin? Well, we keep reading the question. How long does it take sound to travel the length of what? A 100 yard football field. So we're gonna start with 100 yards and we're gonna calculate how, many how long does it take sound to travel that distance? So we're gonna start with 100 yards over one. And we have to convert yards until we get to time seconds. So here's our conversion factor that we could use, but it's meters per second. If we could convert yards to meters, then we could use this to convert to seconds. Okay. However, does anyone know the relationship between yards and meters? I don't know it. Um, you could Google it. You could look it up on the internet and you could probably find a relationship between yards and meters and use that. And that would be a one step problem. But chances are, if you are if you got this on a quiz or a test, you're not going to be able to use the internet. So use what you know. Okay, so I know that one yard is equal to three feet. So I'm going to put one yard on the bottom, three feet on top. So yards cancel out. Now I got feet. I know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. So that's going to be my next one. So on the bottom, I'm going to put one foot. On the top, I'm going to put 12 inches. So then now feet cancel out. Now I have inches. I know that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So I'm going to use that. So on the bottom, I'm going to put one inch. On the top, I'm going to put 2.54 centimeters. Inches cancels out. I know that uh, 100 centimeters is equal to a meter or one centimeter is equal to one one hundredth of a meter. So I can use either of those. So now I'm going to set that up. I'm going to put on the bottom centimeters. So one centimeter is equal to one one hundredth or 10 to the negative two meters. 
So centimeters cancel out. Now I have meters. Now I can use the 333 meters per second as a conversion factor. So let's do that. So I have 333 meters. That's going to go on the bottom, 333 meters. And one second on top, meters are going to cancel out. I now I have seconds on the top. That is what I want. How long does it take? So I want time in seconds. So now I'm done. So now all I need to do is multiply across the top, divide by everything on the bottom. I'll get my answer. And when I do that, I get 0 0.275. 0 0.275 seconds. So that is the length of time. Now, again, since I'm multiplying and dividing, the rule for sig figs is the answer should have the same number of sig figs as the least number of sig figs in my uh, measurements. But we have to ignore the exact measurements. So one yard is exactly equal to three feet. So we ignore that. One foot is exactly 12 inches. Ignore that. One inch is exactly equal to 2.54. One centimeter is exactly equal to 10 to the negative 2. And this 333 meters per second, that is not exact. It's a measure. And this 100, you can think of it as exact or not exact. It doesn't matter. Um, I would take this as being an exact measurement. So that's going to be an exact measurement of 100 yards. And so the only number of sig figs we have to worry about is here, 333. Three, three. And of course, ironically enough, the number of sig figs is 3. So we should have number of sig figs 3 here. Okay, next, number 3. When one gram of hydrogen gas, H2, is burned, 141.8 kilojoules of heat is released from one gram. Okay. How much heat is released when 2.1708 kilograms of hydrogen gas are burned? So first, we need to figure out our conversion factors. Pull that out. We're said that one gram of hydrogen gas is burned and releases this amount of kilojoules. So we have a relationship between one gram of the hydrogen gas and 141.8 kilojoules of heat. So those are going to be related. So one gram and 141.8 joules or kilojoules of energy. So these are connected to each other. Okay, so that we can use as a conversion factor between kilojoules of energy and grams of hydrogen gas. That's the only relationship I see here. We have a standalone uh, amount, 2.1708 kilograms of hydrogen gas. Um, but it's part of the question. So we need to figure out where to begin and where to end. And remember, the question is where you want to go. The beginning of the question is the end of your problem. So how much heat is released? Well. Heat is measured in what? Kilojoules. So we want to find the kilojoules of heat. So how much heat in kilojoules released when what? 2.1708 kilograms of the hydrogen gas is burned. So here we're going to start with this amount of hydrogen gas. So we're going to start with 2.1708 one seven zero eight kilograms of H2 gas over one. And next we're going to convert. So we have kilograms. If we could get to grams, we could use the relationship between grams and kilojoules. So we need to convert kilograms to grams. I know that one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams because kilo means a thousand. So I'm going to put one kilogram of H2 on the bottom and 10 to the 3 or 1,000 grams 
of H2 on top. So kilograms of H2 cancels out. Now I have grams of H2 on top. So now I can use the one gram is equal to 141.8 kilojoules of heat energy. So we can use that as a conversion factor. So here I have grams on top. So I'm going to put grams on the bottom. So it's going to be one gram of H2 gas. And then on top, I'm going to put the 141.8 kilojoules of energy. So 141.8 kilojoules of energy. So uh, the grams of H2 cancel out. Now I'm left with kilojoules of energy. That is what we're looking for. We want to know how much heat or how much heat energy in kilojoules is released. So now all we need to do is multiply and divide. And when we get that, we get 3.078, 3.078 times 10 to the positive 5 kilojoules. So here we have our answer. Notice as for sig figs, remember that when you multiply and dividing, the rule is, is that your answer should have the same number of sig figs as the least number of sig figs in your measurements. So here we have one, two, three, four, five sig figs. This is exact, so we're going to ignore this. Here we have four sig figs. So the least number is four. So our answer should have four sig figs. One, two, three, four. So that's the answer. One more problem to go. So here we have the average adult male needs about 58 grams of protein each day. Okay, so here's a relationship. 58 grams of protein every day. So that's going to be a possible conversion factor that we could use. A can of beans has 6.0 grams of protein per serving. Okay, so, so a can, one can has 6 grams of protein per serving. So, and then that's going to be a conversion, possibly. And then it says each serving, so one serving is 128 grams of beans. So we got a few conversion factors here that we can use. Okay, so here we're told, okay, that one can has point, has six zero zero grams of protein per serving, okay? So we got one can is related to six grams of protein per serving. So here we have six grams of protein per serving. Though one can probably not gonna be useful, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so now that we pulled out our conversion factors, we go to the question because we need to figure out where to begin and where to end. And the beginning of the question is the end of the problem. How many pounds, so pounds, we want to find pounds of beans. So you need the weight of beans in pounds. Would you need to eat every day, assuming that that's the only thing you're eating, to get your 58 grams of protein each day, right? So how are we going to get 58 grams of protein every day uh, from just eating beans? How many pounds of beans would we have to eat? Okay, so where is the standalone information? So we need how about pounds would you need to eat every day? So here we have 58 grams of protein each day. So here we can we need to know how much beans per day. So we need a, we need a relationship of per day. And we're given 58 grams of protein each day. So let's start with that. So 58 grams, and I'm going to put P for protein, per one day. Now we need to know 
How many pounds of beans do we need to eat per day? So the per day here is not going to change. So we can just keep that. The only thing we need to change is the 58 grams of protein. So we need to convert 58 grams of protein to pounds of beans. Okay, let's see what we can use. So we got grams of protein. Do we have anything related to grams of protein? Okay, here we have six grams of protein is related to one serving. So we can convert grams of protein to serving. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put grams of protein on the bottom. So that's going to be 6.0 grams of protein. And then on the top, one serving. So we'll just put serve for serving. So here, grams of protein cancel out. Now we got servings. Now where do we go? Do we have a relationship related to servings? So here, each serving is what? 128 grams of beans. So now we're getting the mass of beans. So we can use that as a conversion factor. So we know that one serving is going to be equal to 128 grams of beans. 128 grams. I'm going to put B for beans. So servings cancel out. Now I have grams of beans, but I don't want grams of beans. I want pounds of beans. So all I need to do is use a relationship between grams and pounds. And we got that one. So 400 and 53.6 grams of beans is equal to one pound of beans. Let me just double check that really quick to make sure 453.6, yes. So now that I have grams of beans here, then it's gonna cancel out. Now I have pounds of beans, that is what I want. So all I need to do now is multiply by everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and I'll get my answer. And when I do that, I get 2.7 pounds. 2.7 pounds of beans. These are vegetarian beans, but beans nonetheless. So here, uh, again, our sig figs. Our, the answer should have the same number of sig figs as the sig figs in the measurements when you're multiplying and dividing, right? So here I have two sig figs. Here I have two sig figs. Uh, this is three sig figs. This is four sig figs. So the least number is two. So my answer should be in two sig figs, 2.7 pounds. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. That's how you solve these problems using conversion factors. I hope this is helpful. And if it is, if you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please, by all means, like the video, share the video, hit that like button somewhere around here. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. When you do, make sure you click all so you'll be notified by all the videos I put out. Finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question or a problem you need help with, or if you have a topic you want me to cover, please put that down below. I would love to do that for you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.